Howdy y'all, so it's voiceover Austin here. Uh, I had some issues with my phone, my other camera, and I lost some footage, so here I am, um, different day, and redoing the shoot. So it's about time to change the oil on my 2010 Volkswagen Jetta TDI. I usually do the oil changes about every 10,000 miles, but that doesn't really matter. So I figured, well, why not? go fire up my old China diesel engine project. So my thoughts were to, to try to, one, run this thing on diesel, which obviously it's designed to do that, and it runs actually fairly well. Uh, it's not too loud. But the bigger question was, how does it run and can it run on waste motor oil? So I've ran a few cars previously on that, and uh, that's pretty straightforward. Obviously, for a car, you want to do more filtering than I'm about to do in this video for this little thing. I mean, this thing was like, what, 190 or like $200, so not too concerned if something happens to it or if an injector gets clogged. But for what it is, it is a fairly cool piece of equipment. So there's a bunch of different manufacturers that are cranking these things out of China, and I kind of recommend picking one up. So here we have is uh, from USP Plastics. These are 100 micron and 200 micron screens. So these will go in 55-gallon drums for the big ones, just like the drums there. You just have to cut out that ring, remove the top, and then you can set that in there. Or you can use the smaller ones in 5-gallon buckets. That is what I'm going to be doing in this video because this thing doesn't use much fuel. So I've changed the oil in my car already. Uh, there's another video if you do want to see an oil change on a 2010 Jetta TDI. Really nothing special. Super easy to do. So now we're going to get into the good stuff. So I've taken this oil from my car. Uh, it's still fairly warm, keep in mind. And I'm going to pour that right into the bucket. So you can see what I run, 1540. Um, pretty happy with that, especially the surface life. So here we go, hot oil right into the screen, and that'll pick up any particles larger than 100 microns. And given the tolerances on this cheap engine, I don't think uh, anything is going to really cause an issue, anything smaller than 100 microns. So again, do this at your own risk. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I recommend this, but uh, if you're trying to tinker around and create some more problems for yourself, hey, I'm all in. So I dumped this in there. Uh, I'm going to be chopping up a few things in the video, nothing too crazy because uh, you guys probably don't want to see endless um, footage. So yep, so screen the oil and then off to the motor. So here we are at the motor. Uh, I'm trying to get the last little remaining bits of diesel out of there without creating too big of a mess. Um, I did spill a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to increase my tree count. So we're just going to leave it at that. So you can see in that little filter bowl right there, there's still a little bit of diesel in there. And so we want to get all of that out and fill that with motor oil. So here I'm a little bit frustrated uh, trying to get that out. And I'm going to fast forward this a bit because this takes me a while. All right, so we are back. We've got all the diesel out of there, and now it's time to add our waste motor oil. So I'm gonna grab a funnel and that five gallon bucket and fill this thing up. So we're on the ground now. I figured this would be a little bit safer and hopefully give you guys a better angle. So originally I went in straight for the bucket and realized, nope, that's not a good idea. And so I grabbed the funnel and I'll be right back. All right, with the trusty funnel in hand, uh, minimizing the chance of spillage, I start to fill this thing up. And so at first I realized I did not actually put enough in there. And so I came back and added more slightly after. Realizing what I've done by not adding enough, uh, this created a big headache of trying to figure out like why this little 
fuel filter jar was not filling. So after messing around, um, pulling it, uh, applying some air pressure, I still could not get the oil. So I added more and then voila, finally got oil flow. So then this little end of the tube goes right into the uh, fuel in on the injector, which you'll see me put there in a moment. And again, uh, I didn't really spill enough to increase the tree count, so just roll with me. Finally, I'm about happy enough with the oil flow and how much oil is actually in that fuel filter. So I kind of do it the old jiggly test. See if any other air would get out of there. Nope, it really didn't. So I was like, all right, well, we're just going to send it. So with the top of the injector nut cracked, uh, you're able to actually push fuel up through the injector line to the injector. So I'm doing that right now. If you look closely, you can see a few drops. I'm satisfied with that process. So I'm just going to tighten that up, struggle to tighten that up, and put this thing on the ground and actually give her a rip. So not really too thrilled with the angle of the camera, but you guys kind of get the picture. So you can see that little fuel filter bolt is nice and black. So these things have a pretty high compression ratio and sometimes if they're not in the right compression stroke when you try to pull them, uh, they will kick back. So here's this little thing just kind of chugging away, getting that last little bit of diesel out of that injector line and that's going to be running on pure motor oil. So at this point, I'm kind of impressed, not so much at, you know, throwing this together, but actually how well it runs. Uh, it doesn't really seem to be misfiring or anything like that or throwing out an excessive amount of smoke. It's just kind of putzing along. So I have future plans of putting this either in a snowblower or a generator or building a generator. Um, biggest difference with these versus like a lot of the North American standard like Briggs and Stratton motors is the shaft size. So these are a 20 millimeter, uh, which usually in the U.S. Uh, we have our three quarter inch key shafts. So you can see here I'm playing with the governor, uh, just revving it up a little bit so you can manually grab it and uh, basically kick the fuel flow up which then kicks the RPMs up. So surprisingly, it really doesn't smoke that bad. You could definitely smell a different smell with it running and I wasn't so worried about that overall. I mean, you know, after running a car on stuff like that, you know, that's totally different. But for a small little, you know, 196 or 198cc engine, uh, it really wasn't too bad. Well, that about uh, answers my question there. Um, here we got one of these Chinese diesel engines running on waste motor oil. So I literally just got that oil out of my car today for my oil change and putting it through a 100 or 200 micron screen and then right into this thing, it fired right up. So I'm pretty impressed. So. I have plans to connect this thing up to a generator head or something like that because basically uh, you'll get free power, right? So waste motor oil is a pretty abundant resource. And if you can convert that into energy that you can use, um, you're just rocking and rolling. So, all right, thanks for watching. And I'm going to fire this up once more and you guys can just kind of watch it lump along. So surprisingly, even on the waste motor oil, it doesn't really smoke much.
which I'm really surprised because I've ran a vehicle off of that before and it really smoked. All right, thanks for watching. Catch y'all later.